I just loved to sing so much. But I just thought maybe everyone just loves to sing and I'm nothing special. When did you realize you had talent? People were like mouth open watching me sing, you know? But that was the first time that I really had that reaction. Suddenly it just uh, clicked. So when you come in for the press that you're about to do, do you have to prep your mind for this? Like, I feel like you have to recharge your battery before you do this. Mm. Yes, I should. Have I? No. So um, I often find myself afterwards being like, damn, I, I wish I'd said that instead of that. Um, I often come up with things afterwards, which is why I always rewrite lyrics because I come up with like a something. And then when I come out the studio, I'm like, no, 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 it had to be that. So I like go back and redo it. So yeah, I should really, I just don't think I have time at the moment. I mean, I keep getting told to meditate, but that means like waking up significantly earlier than I do. And I prefer the sleep at the moment. You know what? I'm going to tell you my meditation that I do while I'm sleeping. What is that? Oh, like I'm sleeping something? and listening to a meditation. Yeah. So I'm passively multitasking. Listen, I'm, tr I'm still trying to figure it out. So just... No, it works. No, I, did I, it no I listen to the car map stories. I listen to the one in outer space and the Nordic train journey and um, and the one about horses in Virginia or something. I don't know. Um, but it's all very calming. And I, and I listen to those to go to sleep. Your voice is very calming. I feel like you could do a meditation app to add to everything you're Maybe doing. I could do. I've got some music um, like mixes on there. Um, so yeah, maybe I could, I need, but, I, but I keep getting told not to speak in this lower register because it's just stopping me from like being able to sing as high. So I keep getting told by my vocal coach to stop talking like this and keep going back up to where you were. No, I like when you talk ago. like this. It's very relaxing. Oh, Wait, it? show me how, how you talk and show me how they want you to talk. Okay. So I'm actually making an effort to talk higher than usual. So I, I would probably start going lower again if I got in, back into the habit, but like I, so usually I talk like here and then I need to talk way higher, like kind of up here. Like the way I talk. Yeah, I, I like the way you talk. <laughs> Just go to California and stay in California for a little yeah, bit. Yeah. It'll rub right <laughs> off on you. I want to go back to when you were young. When was a moment that you realized that you were really into singing and songwriting? Can you remember a moment, an epiphany? Uh, I remember hearing songs on the radio and wanting to sing those songs and um one of them was when mariah carey covered you know i can't live even is without you that was like the biggest song of that time i think especially in the uk uh and then i don't know i think i think i realized quite quite young that i was really passionately into music but i just assumed everybody was passionately into music and so i'd sort of you know be constantly asking my friends about songs and wanting them to do like backing vocals with me on them. And I was wanting to do performances in school. And um, I mean, I was pretty shy, but um, I just loved to sing so much. But I just thought maybe everyone just loves to sing and I'm nothing special, you know? When did you realize you had talent? Did your parents tell you? Did outside mm -hmm. people tell you? Uh, did my parents tell me? I don't know if they did. Again, it was like, it kind of took me um, to get out of, I grew up in a really small village, like pretty much in the middle of nowhere. And then- Where, where was it near? Um, uh, like Herefordshire. So kind of on the border between Wales and England, okay. like right slap bang in the middle. So it was like mountains to my left, flat fields of England to my right. Um, so right, right there. And then only really when I got to university did I, like people were like, like mouth open watching me sing, you know? But that was the first time that I really had that reaction because back in the village I was playing in like the little open mic nights and stuff, people were like, mm, you know, it was just like a small town and like, you know, it was, uh, just didn't get much of a reaction. But then it seemed like as soon as I got to a place where people would come from all over the world to, to learn and whatever, um, suddenly it just uh, clicked. When um, you're playing, to people who are not in the small village when you when as you grow are are you putting a lot of work into your talent or are you just naturally talented or is it a medley probably more of a medley I mean you can yeah you can have lots and lots of raw talent I guess but if you don't have other things um you know it can it can uh just kind of stay in, in one place whereas I guess I I was quite 
I don't even know if ambitious is the word. I feel like we've been taught as women to like not, you know, we, we shouldn't be ambitious. Um, and that word has suddenly become like a bad word or something. Um, so whenever I say it, I kind of cringe a bit, um, which is which is a shame because we should be able to just say, yeah, we're ambitious and yeah, we want to go far in life. Um, but um, I think I was just always a very determined kid. And, um, and that kind of then um, ended up in my determination, uh, wanting to, wanting to, be a performer and so there are lots of different it's like a cocktail you need to have really if you've got because clearly I could sing and I could write and I could play um and then it really it was like everything else I needed to kind of get me to a certain place and eventually sign a record deal what are some sacrifices that you made early on for what you do um the first thing that came to my head then was uh I didn't really have that many friends and not because I wasn't like people didn't want to hang people wanted to hang out with me but I was kind of an all I was kind of an awkward person and I would spend every day playing guitar and then I'd go for like, I'd have to run like 10K a day. Then I'd have to go do like weights. And then I would like, um, I was busy, you know, I'd go and do like, I'd get on the train and do an open mic night in London, come back, study, go for a run and just write music. So I was quite antisocial. So people did, I think, I think people wanted to hang out with me, but I just didn't, I didn't end up doing that. So I had like two friends by the end of it really. Yeah. And did you run 10K a day just because like it made you feel good? Was that a part of what you were doing to make you be a peak performer? Yeah, I think so. I think it was just a ritual that got into my head and I couldn't shake it off. And then, you know, I was quite superstitious. So if I didn't do it, I would, uh, I still do it now really. I don't run 10K a day, but I, I have to do something every day. Something I, I, I actually relate to that. I've never heard anyone articulate it like that. I, It's almost, it's not an OCD, but it's just... So it's like something you want to check off your list. I get like that too with my workout. Yeah. Like some people, when I've said that to people will, will be like, oh, that's unhealthy to, you know, to be, to be unhealthy, to be healthy. And I'm like, <laughs> how is that unhealthy? <laughs> like, you know, I, it, it's probably the healthiest ritual that I could have come up with. And yeah, you know, the idea that if I don't do it, then I'm screwed that, that maybe that's slightly more unhealthy, but, um, and I've got, I've lost that now, but back then, yeah, it was just something I felt I had to do every day to, to then be able to study and, and, and write and yeah. It also clears your head. And in my opinion, makes you a more effective performer when you are performing. Yeah. Well, it's, everyone knows that exercise is good for you, but, um, I guess we don't go in depth with it that much in that it um, it literally makes you feel better, literally elevates your mood, creates all kinds of other, what do you call it, neural pathways, or I don't know, the like technical terms, but um, it literally releases endorphins straight into your body. And I don't know if you notice after a workout, but when you, uh, in the morning when you wake up just feeling crap and you just like, you're kind of in a bad mood and you get, you know, somebody will want me to approve something, and, like, uh, and then you do a workout and suddenly you're just like, da, 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 and you're like, you feel productive and you feel like you, so as much as I, I, you know, I never want to do a workout, but then afterwards I've never like regretted it ever once. Yeah, I'm in a, obviously we're in a different world than you are, but I feel like once you do the workout, you know, from a business context, I always get my most creative ideas after. Yeah. It's like a fog's lift and you think, you like can connect things that you weren't connecting yeah. before. But that's not a coincidence. That's like literally your brain has sure. opened up things to help you be more creative and productive. Yeah. When did you have your first big break? When could you taste it? What did, what did that look like? Um, I, I guess it was when I signed a record deal. I, I was, I was trying to sign for like a good couple of years in London. Uh, and then it was just like a moment. Maybe I wrote a new song out of frustration at not being signed. I really thought I was going to have to, um, just sort of go back to the day job. I had like three day jobs. What were the day did? jobs? Yeah. You, you really thought you had to go back. So this to is why I had job. no friends. Cause I, when I was at uni, I. I transferred my jobs from where I grew up to my university. So I I um, was working at the theatre there, selling tickets and a, the, a clothes shop called Monsoon. So that kind of took up a lot of my time. Um, and I thought, oh, I can just go back there because I've got like decent jobs, you know. Um, and, um, and then f finally, just as I ran out of money, I signed a record deal. And that's when I, I was like, I'm safe, I'm saved. When you sign a record deal, is there like a list of requirements that they, and I put this in quotes, make you do? Like, are they telling you, you have to do this workout, you have to eat this, you have to have your hair this color, or is it kind of, you do what you want? They would, I don't think they would ever say stuff like that, especially to like a male artist or a male fronted band. 
back then. Um, but uh, I would say that there were certain things that were maybe assumed and um, and were kind of maybe encouraged, but weren't necessarily directly you know, given to you, like um, keep keeping in good shape and um, looking. You know, I would I could never like go go on something without makeup on or um, wearing something feminine. I think I, I think they wanted to kind of market me as like a feminine thing girl next door thing maybe is that what you did is that what you wanted or was that uncomfortable uh, it not really I, I i've always been um quite sort of androgynous i guess mm -hmm. androgynous, is that the word um we used to say like tomboy back in the day yeah. that was kind of what i was um and i was like on a girls football team and obviously i, I like would you know i like to lift weights and so no i never really saw myself as like a feminine person um but because I was so elated and, and um, uh, you know, I was so grateful to have signed to a major record label that I just kind of went with it and thought, well, I sh I'm just lucky to be here. So yeah, I'm just gonna do what they, you know. And also, you know, it was partly me because I, it took, it took a few years of just, you know, figuring out what I wanted for myself as an artist anyway. So it was like partly them and then maybe partly me just like needing a bit more kind of um conviction in in what, what i was doing and are you one of those artists like how does this work for you from a writing perspective do you write the lyrics first and then later figure out a melody or do you hear a melody in your head and then have to kind of like add the lyrics to it because i've heard it explained different ways i'm Michael's sure it's about to sing for you no you just, no, just listen kidding. you don't want to we have to end the podcast <laughs> um it's usually a melody that triggers like a lyric like idea. you hear a melody in your head yeah well sometimes something happens that's so shit and then i so and I, and I just come up with a i come up with a lyric there and then that just kind of somehow summarizes what what i'm feeling um but that's kind of rare like it takes like a rare kind of emotional i don't know moment um to do that but usually yeah, i hear melodies and then it, and then something kind of um it triggers something in my head that then kind of comes up with lyrics and so it kind of all works together and are you mostly drawing from personal experiences or observations from other people's experience like what is yeah I, i'm just i always get curious about like the process of how people come to create the music they create it's definitely a bit of both um in the beginning it was all me i you know i was fascinated by um i mean i was like falling in love from like the age of 10 or something you know with everyone and um and so that was kind of you know, I, I was obsessed with my own experiences in my childhood. And, and then um, and then I opened myself up a bit, you know, I got to travel, I got to meet people, meet people from different worlds. And um, I started to maybe be a bit more of an empath and, and wanting to explore, you know, what other people were going through. Um, and now it's really a combination. And some of my friends and, and people I know go through the craziest you know, situations with partners and with family and just with work and that I um, can't help but like be inspired by that. Yeah. When you start to skyrocket to fame, is there like, is it weird with your family? I know you said you didn't have a lot of friends, but you said you had a couple. Is it weird with your family and friends to manage this life that's like, you're becoming famous, you're having all this stuff thrown at you, you can kind of like have whatever you want, but then you also come from this small town so you want to balance that too mm. well i've kept the same friends from what we we have primary school in the uk i don't know what you guys i think you it's have like, like that's like it's like elementary school right it's like i don't know I how, don't how know. old are you in primary school like maybe like uh i started when i was like, i think five yeah yeah it's like five to eleven like elementary school yeah. yeah um i'm very cultured so <laughs> so yeah so i still got the, those friends um and they have never been affected by what I do at all. It's almost like they always knew that I was kind of a performer and, and it just, it wasn't like a shock to them. And they they know me, you know, they, they saw me growing up and we went through so much together as kids that um, it would be very strange for them to just be like, oh my God, like, what's it like doing what you do? Like, they just don't. They, they know be, you for you. Yeah, and, and I know them for them. And it's just like a bond that we have and, I, I don't think I've changed. Well, certainly when I see them, I'm just back to like myself. I have to maybe shake off some of the stuff I've picked up along the way, and then I'm like back to me again. Um, but then I think that's the same with the people around me. Um, I surround myself with women pretty much, um, which um, I feel like really helps me. And, um, and 
most people just get it and just go with it. And then there might be some in the early days that were perhaps a bit like alienated by it um, and um, probably affected, you know, friendships. And, and But also I realized that you just, you do, you know, lose friendships along the way. And it's not like a bad thing. It's not like it just happens, it's just life, you know, you change, they change. Same with relationships, I guess. Sakara. If you have not gotten the detox drops and the beauty water drops, you are missing out. I put them in my water every single morning. I travel with them. The detox drops are these little drops in a tincture. They're chlorophyll and they really help with your blood circulation. They give you energy. They're incredible if you're in altitude. And then the beauty drops are minerals. So you're getting your minerals and your chlorophyll in the morning in your water. I do ginger. I do mint. I do lemon. I put it in there. I do my drops. It's a whole habit stack. I love it. Even Zaza, my daughter, will ask for a sip. It's so hydrating and incredible in the morning, and it just sexes up your whole water. If you are looking for ready-to-eat plant-rich meals, they also have that on their site. So Cara really does it all, and every single thing on their site, from their meals to their drops, are designed to make you feel your best. So Cara delivers science-backed plant-rich nutrition programs and wellness essentials right to your door. Their ready-to-eat meals are nutritionally designed to deliver results. From weight management to easing bloat to boosting energy to clearer skin, all the things. We have a code for you. Definitely use this and get the drops. And if you want food delivered to your door, you guys, like if you're busy or a mom, whatever, they have the best meal delivery program. Right now, Sakara is offering our listeners 20% off your first order when you go to sakara.com slash skinny or enter code skinny at checkout. That's sakara, S-A-K-A-R-A dot com slash skinny, and you get 20% off your first order. Sakara.com slash skinny. If you've been listening to this podcast and you have not tried Just Thrive products, you're missing out. I've been using this probiotic for the last two years. We even had a microbiologist on the podcast to discuss the benefits of an incredible probiotic, and he recommended this one. And there's a reason it actually survives the trip to the gut. So Just Thrive products, to give you a little background, have more clinical research than any other products on the market. They have a thousand times better survivability versus yogurt and leading probiotics. Most of them die on the trip to the gut. All of their products provide immune support, boost energy, improve sleep, promote healthy skin, encourage healthy weight management, and support, most importantly, the gut-brain connection. So the products that I like on Just Thrive are obviously the probiotic. And then I like the Just Calm, which is a psychobiotic. So that's the move. That's what I would do. And of course, we have a code for you. If you're ready to up your wellness game and beat bloat, digestive issues, stress, and more, you get 20% off a 90-day bottle of Just Thrive Probiotic and my favorite, the Just Calm. You get 20% off a 90-day bottle of Just Thrive Probiotic and the Just Calm, which is my move, at justthrivehealth.com with promo code SKINNY90. You get 20% off a 90-day bottle of Just Thrive Probiotic and the Just Calm at justthrivehealth.com with promo code SKINNY90. That's justthrivehealth.com with promo code SKINNY90. If you're one of the many people out there that feels like you have a lack of focus, lack of energy, not sleeping the best, maybe not getting the best results in the gym or during your workouts, it may be because you're not properly hydrated. This is why I love this product from Element. Element is a tasty electrolyte drink mix with everything you need and nothing you don't. That means lots of salt with no sugar. It contains science-backed electrolyte ratios of 1,000 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, and 60 milligrams of magnesium. How I use Element, and I just took some, is every time we go to the gym, we put it in our drink during the workout. This is going to make sure that we're hydrated, getting the best results during that workout. It's also going to make sure that we don't get so dehydrated after the workout. So if you're somebody again that feels like you're drinking the proper amount of water but you're just not getting the results it's probably because you don't have the right electrolytes element is formulated to help anyone with their electrolyte needs and perfectly suited to folks following a keto low carb or paleo diet electrolytes facilitate hundreds of functions in the body including the conduction of nerve impulses hormone regulation nutrient absorption and fluid balance element can also help prevent and eliminate headaches muscle cramps fatigue sleeplessness and other symptoms of electrolyte deficiency so again guys this is a game changer when you start incorporating into your life and it's so simple you literally just open a packet they come in these little individualized packets dump it in some water and you're good to 
ago. This product is currently used by everyone from NBA, NFL, NHL, Olympic, Navy SEALs to everyday moms and dads and exercise enthusiasts. Many people are getting incredible results and you can too. Right now, Element is offering our listeners a free sample pack with any purchase. That's eight single serving packets free with any Element order. This is a great way to try all eight flavors or share Element with a salty friend. Get yours at drinkelement.com slash skinny. This deal is only available through our link. You must go to D-R-I-N-K-L-M-N-T dot com slash skinny element offers no questions asked refunds try it totally risk-free if you don't like it share it with a salty friend and they will give you your money back no questions asked you have nothing to lose drink element.com slash skinny be honest here and i don't want you to be humble at all at all i think when i daydream i'm like listen if i did anything else if i had one ounce of musical talent which i don't unfortunately doing what you do being a musician at the skill it has to be the most fun career job path in the world and i hate when people sugar kind of like it, it's it's fun you're having fun right well me as a yeah. musician like it's got to be the most fun thing like i think about it all the time like get up there you perform you gotta do your thing you get a party a little bit you gotta make people happy right like yeah that's the fun bit yeah. being on stage anxiety free in front of people that love you and sing along to your music that there is there really isn't a feeling like comparable to that yeah, the imagine. other stuff, not so fun. What's the other stuff? Luckily, like the this. fun outweighs <laughs> the anxiety and everything no. else. Um, yeah, you know, it's you realize like you put, you put yourself out there and um, you are never going to be, you know, anonymous. You're never going to, there are like worse things that, that can happen to you. Um, but um, there are there are definitely some things that I would, you know, maybe take away if I had the option. Like, what are your edits? If you were to edit this, like like, like a song, what are you editing out? Um, <laughs> being photographed, like, constantly. I would, As I Lauren would has the camera in your to, face and these 18 yeah. cameras on you? <laughs> this, is, this is a safe place. Um, you you know, mean like when you're out and about? And, and feeling like there's just always someone watching you. That's not a nice feeling. Yeah, because I imagine in the beginning, you're it's a controlled environment. And you're going to smaller crowds, and you're go, and you're kind of getting what you're expecting, right? Like you're mm -hmm. uh, you're going to have these few people see you, but then as it gets bigger and yeah. bigger and bigger, and all of a sudden you're on the street, and there's just cameras everywhere like yeah. that. I always think about that. It's like there's maybe a level of when it gets so big that you can't reverse it. Well, I think right? people see that still, still, still see that as like the glamorous thing. Like, oh my god, sure. I imagine just being photographed in you know in your outfits and looking great and. I mean, it, it, but it's not like that, you know, it's quite an uncomfortable kind of feeling. And I think now like the, the level of scrutiny has reached this peak of just craziness where you're, you're watched and, and listened. Um, you know, every single thing you say, everything you do, you have risk of, of you know, the, the risk has become so high now of just like messing up mm -hmm. because of like, you know, the, the culture and, um, it's uh, so so you just become more and more scared of what you're saying and i don't know whether people are just having to become robots now to, you know to deal with it all and and take away you have to preface everything yeah like, even online i'll see people be like i know i'm really lucky to have this and then they'll go into like it's you have to preface everything yeah i, I i've noticed it the most with like my activism because i often talk about climate change i often talk about um you know, plastic problem, uh, talk about um, how there's gonna be more plastic in the ocean than fish in like in like 10 years time and like mad things like that. And and half half the people say, you know, call me things like hypocritical because of what I do and the amount I fly. Um, and then and then and then like the other half will, will say, um, thanks for like telling me that and, and thanks for being, you know, using your platform, blah, blah. So it seems like, um, Everything you do is is gonna come with um, someone or a few people saying, like not agreeing. You could say the nicest thing in the world. You could say the truest thing in the world, and still somebody will say that it's false. If you're damned one, if you do. You're damned. Yeah, yeah. If there's one thing we've learned doing this for as long as we've done it, you, like there's no way to appease everybody. So you just gonna kind of be yourself, right? Like exactly. it's like the the only thing. I know that word authenticity gets thrown around, but it's true. You just like kind of be like, well, this is who I am. I'm gonna make some missteps. Yeah. Is what it is. But I I think about the level of um, fame or notoriety that you've achieved. And I, and I, we have all different kinds of people on the show. And I, and I think there's a certain point where you can't turn it back. And what I mean by that is like, we do the show a lot and it gets, it gets notoriety, but 
I still feel we're at the point where like if we said, hey, we're done and we don't want any kind of platform, like we could turn it back and mm. that would be it. But there's a certain level once you cross it, you can't turn it back. And yeah. I imagine that's a challenge for some people because to your point, many people glamorize it and say like, I, you know, they dream of a life like that. They have never experienced it. But once you have it and you can't turn it back, it's like you're in it now for yeah. probably the rest of your life. Yeah, it is. It is definitely a way of life when you uh, have become, I don't know, public figure, somebody that people follow, somebody that people look up to. And it is, yeah, it's probably quite a lot of pressure that I try not to think about. And then also, you know that turning your back on it would probably mean not being able to do the thing you love. So it's really like, it's a bit of a sacrifice, but if I can always be a musician and write music and perform, then, I, you know, I really took it for granted during lockdown. Um, I really struggled with not before. I didn't realize how much it was like holding me together until it all stopped, you know, and didn't perform for like two years. Yeah, okay, I forgot about that because the music industry just fully what, shut down. What does right? your life look like in lockdown when it just stops? Um, <laughs> I'm sure so many people are curious. So I just that. finished Writer's Blue, my fourth album, and it was the proudest album of my career. And I was like, right, can't wait to get out on tour. Can't wait to, you know, explain this music and, and break it down and, and to do, like, I want to do all these um, different um, visuals and um, and I like, wanted to do a whole a cappella series with it and with a choir and I had all these big ideas. And then suddenly, you know, it was announced that there was gonna be this lockdown. And um, so we just all went away and I lived in a tiny, um cottage in a village just outside of oxford um so like like an hour out of london um and that's kind of where i was and i like i, know, I was training like running every day making cakes which I like counteracted that and um i don't know i like i i, try, I tried to stay healthy and, and happy but it was tough you know i i realized that like, everything had stopped and we had no idea when, when it was going to start again i did quite a few shows from the bathroom i was doing like tv shows like live tv from like toilet it was really weird yeah yeah i was gonna say because like podcasting kind of had this little boom during that time right? oh, yeah. just, like, people could zoom yeah but for musicians it was tough and i imagine it in a way kind of awkward in your bathroom just like kind of strumming away right yeah, it was but i mean it made me probably better at yeah. what i do because i had to you know i couldn't overcompensate with like big performances and outfits so i just had to be like good again i had to like pick the guitar up again and actually go back to you know just being a musician again and not all the bells and whistles you have to get very creative what's, yeah what's something you wish you knew about the career path you've chosen that you didn't know until you know you kind of found yourself here uh, if anything i don't know i mean in the beginning it was probably a bit tougher just because it was still very male dominated and I found myself like being very apologetic and feeling a bit um like i had to um sort of panda a lot to people maybe other musicians but, or record label like no just yeah like record label people mm -hmm. um people behind the scenes um so i just i don't know i i guess it's not really the answer to the to question but i maybe i wish i'd been a bit tougher in the beginning um but then you know everything's worked out like yeah there's there's been like you know a few bumps and and um, a few times that that were, were tougher than others but you know i'm still here like releasing music so it's quite hard to like think oh I wish but you know if I if there was like a young musician starting out you know I would say to uh, make sure you surround yourself with people you feel safe with like maybe like like me like all women um and and make sure that you're um taking enough time to um get inspiration to write and not just like be on the grind and and suddenly you find yourself like having panic, panic attacks because you haven't caught your brain hasn't caught up with your body vice versa so um, I'd probably say that I probably I mean I have so much advice I'd give to like young musicians but it would take another whole other podcast I think it seems like the behind the scenes of the record industry is very male dominated and it, yeah like a lot of <laughs> a lot of men in suits giving their opinion to what people like my age or millennials want to hear which mm. is doesn't make any sense yeah and when it comes to owning your own music and 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 all all of this control that they sort of have behind the scenes how have you managed that because it seems like you've done a really beautiful job of it uh, you, thank you <laughs> um it's a lot of work it's sure. been it's been like challenging at times uh i think any female musician 
um, even you know now so many non-binary musicians artists coming through which is amazing and um, you know things really changing and picking up pace and and it's good I think I think we're just still in this kind of transition stage um, with 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 everything you know I still think we're trying to figure out the world is changing so fast and I just think the kind of infrastructure isn't there yet to to um, to help it and it's you know so things might be happening, but then there's not like rules or laws to to assist that. So it's like, I think we're still in this time where we're trying to just piece things together. And so it's the same with, you know, when the Me Too movement happened, I was, it, it made like a, like a very obvious, like there were very obvious changes and differences to, um, to the way things were working. And so I think that was such an important movement. What, like, what do you mean? Um, I just noticed that <laughs> I noticed there was a lot, a lot, there was a lot more professionalism. That's that's nice. Yeah, wasn't as sleazy as an operation. <laughs> that's I mean I wasn't going to say that, but yeah, a um, lot less perviness. No, Listen, these um, men are these men are the worst. Yeah, <laughs> it just it was in the beginning. You know, I had a few situations. I've been very open about it, so I think it's important. Where I you know walked into the studio as a young like 20, 21 year old and. You know, didn't feel safe, and it's like doesn't doesn't mean that they're like leching on you or like touching your leg. It's just a feeling that we have that where you just don't feel completely safe, and then it kind of becomes a bit of a trigger and a bit of a like a minute bit of trauma that just stays with you. And so, um, just something's off. Something's off. Yeah. yeah. And then everyone can feel you're a pervert if you're a pervert, even if you don't <laughs> touch someone. We can feel you're a pervert. Yeah. It's the eyes. It's the it's what the you energy. Say, it's yeah. The energy. Like, yeah. Don't try to like graze my leg. Like, no, I'm like, I'm, <laughs> no, <laughs> like every, if you're a pervert, we can feel it yeah. just so you know, and if I, a pervert's listening. Yeah, I, exactly. <laughs> Any fabs is for all of our notes. perverts in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> but no, and I, I have noticed like that, you know, good changes. It's a shame that the change had to be made in the first place, but I think we're all feeling it in every industry there is, you know, we're like slowly gaining a bit more respect, the respect we should have had all along, but um, I'm just, so grateful for that whole movement. I watched um, She Said the other day. Uh, have you ever seen it? That yet. It's good. It's just like, you know, badass female journalists just uncovering, you know, at the risk of their own lives, even um, uncovering all this information about people behind the scenes. And um, thank God for them. Well, I think the biggest thank thing, God too, is like, I mean, and sometimes this works against us, but in this case, it doesn't. Like, there's so much transparency and visibility now where, like, a yeah. lot of the stuff that used to live in the shadows, it can't anymore. Because, like, yeah. you can't be a creep these days. You're a creep. You're going to get you're gonna get caught in two seconds, right? Exactly. I feel like money and power don't necessarily work for you anymore. It doesn't work anymore. Yeah, yeah you're right. It doesn't, doesn't go as far as it used to. Who is the coolest, most talented artist that you've worked with? Like, and I mean cool behind the scenes, too, not just in front of a crowd. Honestly, every artist I work with has been for a reason. Like I meet them and I, I, I straight away know they have good vibes, good energy, kind. No perv. No pervs, no. <laughs> I mean, maybe like in the early days. Uh, <laughs> um, but then, you know, I suss them out and then like, and then like started working with the good ones. You know, Calvin is, is always amazing and um, just supremely talented. Like, um, you know, I, I always say like, I would I try and give him like, you know, I'm like, have an opinion on something like a bit of the track or a bit of the vocal and he he listens but you know i already know that he's just got it locked in and he knows exactly what he's doing he doesn't need to take anyone else's you know advice um which is amazing it's just such a it's such a powerful thing to have when you just don't you know, it's like the max martin guys you know made some of the biggest songs of all time and you know songs that have like literally changed people's lives and they just all like live in sweden and just chill over there and um, you know, write a hit and then go back to their lives. I think that's amazing. Um, and then, you know, I've worked with like everyone from like Juice Wells, Big Sean, um, God, who else have I done things with? Kygo, um, Skrillex. I mean, a lot of electronic artists because that's, I grew up listening to electronic music. So that was sort of my first thing that I wanted to do. You know, so I went straight to all those guys. For all the people who are listening who are into beauty and skincare and like health and wellness hacks what are some things that you do to prepare to go on stage do you do like red light therapy is there a certain brand of skincare you like what are your little hacks for mm. wellness uh i would say start within as much as possible i know you know everyone has different skin types and hair types and whatever else but um so like 
you know, like we're saying, I don't know, exercise, moving as much as possible, even if it's just like dancing or yoga, like just moving your body first thing in the morning, drink lots of water, drink lots of electrolytes, green tea, uh, vegetables, fish, all the good stuff. It sounds really basic, but it's true. Start with that. And then there might be like a product um, that is, I don't know, organic, made from as natural things as possible. Um, I'm trying to think of a specific brand. I use so many different things. Uh, to be honest, my morning routine is just like squeezing like five different things in my hands and going like that. Um, but like I use like a face roller because I know that it like wakes all the collagen up and, and I use it on my neck so I feel like loose when I sing. So it's quite specific to singing as well, what I do. I steam my throat and I do red light therapy sometimes just for anxiety. Apparently it's good for that. Um, I brought you an ice roller so I'm glad you like rollers. I love rollers. That makes sense for your throat. There is one thing I eat every single day without fail. If you want to know what it is. We want yeah, to know. I, I want blueberries. To know. Listen. I eat blueberries every day. Great antioxidant to keep you what hydrated. Did she eat? Blueberries. Every blueberries. Day. Yeah. So what did you eat before you came here? Blueberries. That's I've got it. them with me. I've got If you eat blueberries, you will live longer too. I'm convinced of it. Wella Professionals just released its most luxurious hair care line, Ultimate Repair. So here's the deal. I went on vacation and I had a lot of moving parts. I had the kids. I was on a boat. I didn't have time to really wash my hair and blow dry it. I was constantly moving. We were on a boat. So what I did is I just decided for the full week, I was basically going to wear my hair in a bun. You can see it on my Instagram. My hair is in a tight, slick back, sleek bun. It's simple. It's chic. It's nice. And what I did is I wanted to multitask why I had my hair in a bun. So I put some oil in my hair. And then I also used Wella Professionals Ultimate Repair Miracle Hair Rescue. And the reason I did that is because I wanted to repair any hair damage while I was having my hair in a bun the whole time. So what it is, is it's like this leave-in spray and it repairs hair damage in 90 seconds. So you get really smooth hair with less breakage and in it are like amazing ingredients. It's vegan, cruelty-free. It also has AHA, which is an organic acid, and this helps penetrate the hair fiber. And most importantly, what I like about it is it has omega-9. So you're really coating the surface and this helps fill in the cuticle to really help give your hair a protective barrier. So what I noticed when I got back was just thicker, smoother, nicer hair. And it's really because I had my hair in a bun with this leave-in spray. If you want to check it out, the bun is the move. And you can purchase Ultimate Repair Miracle Hair Rescue at Ulta now. You can also go to wella.com. That's W-E-L-L-A.com to learn more. Let me tell you about Squarespace. Squarespace is absolutely amazing if you're a business owner or you want to have a business online. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. I am personally a huge fan of Squarespace because I feel like it seamlessly integrates everything you need to have an e-com store. So they have like video blocks. You can present your videos and even your YouTubes on your site. They also have a traffic overview. So I'm able to actually go on and check how many visits I get, unique visitors and even page views. So you can really gain insights to who's shopping, who's looking, if they're looking at your products, what they're typing in, what they're searching, all the things. And then most importantly, you have content ownership. So you own all of the content that you put on the Squarespace platform. That's incredibly important when building a website, as you guys know. They also have email campaigns. They collect donations, analytics, blogging tools. It's just designed for people who want to be efficient and run a business in the most seamless way blogging tools, SEO tools, mailing list, you are going to head to squarespace.com slash skinny for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use offer code skinny. You save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Make sure you use code skinny to save 10% off at squarespace.com slash skinny. Thank you, no diamonds. Probably not as much as you think. Did you know that a stone is connected to 10 million people around the world? From Canada to Africa to Australia, the natural diamond industry has transformed local communities from which the diamond originate with healthcare, education, and infrastructure over the last two decades and is committed to continued progress. Your natural diamond also helps provide access to education for children around the world, including over half a million children in rural communities. And your natural diamond helped fund more than 400 women-owned businesses across Africa. Thanks to your natural diamond, the lives of millions of wild animals globally, including threatened species, are protected from extinction. 
Your natural diamond helps protect endangered rhinos, and each natural diamond promises a sparkling future for generations to come. Discover so many more natural diamond truths at naturaldiamonds.com slash thank you. That's naturaldiamonds.com slash thank you. Yeah, I had blueberries. I did have a bit of, um, what did I have this one? I had like a kind of drink with like probiotic in and a bit of maca and, uh, I don't know, cacao. I'm obsessed with chocolates. Anything with cacao in it, I have. Coffee, tea? Yeah, I had a, had a, had a decaf almond latte because you know, they're nice here. They're nice in New York. A decaf? Yeah, I've got to have decaf. I can't have caffeine. I can't really have like full calf. Oh my God. Too, too anxious to do that. After you're done with a show, are you super hyped up or are you exhausted? Really hyped for like half an hour. You've still got the adrenaline pumping and then like, then you just go down. So after you perform, are you like going out on a high or do you go home and crash? I go to my, generally I'll go to my dressing room, have a couple of drinks with um, a couple of my team, just talk about the show maybe. Um, and then you start to feel the adrenaline burning off and then you kind of get a bit of a like, you know, um, crash and then and you're like, right, bedtime. And then I have to go through a whole like bedtime routine. How do you stay disciplined to manage, you know, when you're in that kind of environment and everyone's having such a good time and I'm sure there's all sorts of partying around, you know, like how yeah. do you maintain that balance and say like, okay, I I'm going to- don't go. You just don't go. Yeah, because- I can't, you know, it's- it, maybe Always didn't like go or just 20s, eventually? Yeah, I just can't keep it up. My band would go every, every- night to um the the you know uh, there'll be like a little after party but I'd maybe like wave and then like so there was a time would you, that you would go and then you just yeah i mean I, I remember when i used to like go to clubs in london you know and um i i just wouldn't now maybe i'm too old now i don't know i, don't know, I see these guys from like the 80s and those old metal bands and i'm like man those guys were i know yeah but for yeah. women it's rough on the skin well, I think it's rough for everybody, but I, I just, just I, yeah, I like nowadays, like if I don't sleep well, it shows up on my face like immediately. Whereas back in the day, I could kind of get away with like not sleeping for a few days. What is your specific bedtime routine? You have to tell us exactly yeah. what it is. It's a um, bit of a stretch. Um, I do my like diffuser, you know, with, like lavender oil in, got that by my bed, it's just a neon one. Um, then I spray my pillow with loads of like this works spray. Then I have like a, I have, usually have like a hot drink, some kind of hot drink with like probably chocolate and with like ashwagandha and um, maybe a bit of um, mushroom powder. See, this stuff sounds all really like mad, but um, actually people are getting into mushrooms now. No, it doesn't sound oh, bad. No, 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 you came to the right podcast. No, you people came to the right love good. routines. Yeah. Tell us all the weird stuff. The weird, yeah. Well, that, I mean, I have, I do have the mushroom powders. Um, it's usually like, because I'm, I'm, I'm not a very good sleeper, so I do have to have like a really long routine and I like put the car map on. Um, and then I have to, sometimes I even put lavender patches on my feet. I just got them from Whole Foods. They're really good. So you sound very disciplined. Uh, yeah, I think I just, I, th I just have to be, you know, maybe I am a bit of a routine-y person um, because I think I've just always had routine, you know, in work and um, now I have a kid, so I have to also factor his routine into mine. How are you doing that? Everyone wants to know that. That's a big question. <laughs> oh gosh. Uh, it's, yeah, it's difficult. I, I often feel I sad wonder. that I can't be with him all the time. I want to drag him with me everywhere, but I know that it's not possible. Uh, and now he's just got to the point where he started going like, mama, when I, when I leave. How old? Two. Yeah. We have a three-year-old and an eight-month-old, so we get it. You have an eight-month-old? Oh my yeah. God. Yeah. It's so he's back, hard. He's back there in the broom it's closet. It's so hard. Oh no, God. he's not in the broom closet. I wish he was in that the broom closet. That is just amazing. I remember that age, eight months. God. It goes that. quick. Everyone it goes, says it. It, and it sounds so quick. cheesy, but it's true. Yeah, it goes so quick. So how do you balance that all? Like, what? How, how do you know when to bring him, when not to bring him? Uh, I, like, for example, I was just in LA, but I made sure that he met me here because I can't be without him for, like, more than two weeks more than a week yeah so like I did a week there um and then I'm, and then he met me here and it's been so nice and then I've got I've got a couple of days now to just hang out with him it's Mother's Day it was in the UK anyway and so um oh I want to celebrate that too yeah what, what day is it Mother's Day I want two Mother's well, Day is this Sunday oh perfect yeah. Michael UK. yeah UK Mother's it's Day Mother's yeah. Day okay yeah okay good to know <laughs> Yeah. So you get to be with him on Mother's Day. Yeah. To be honest, I, I, I just, all I want to do is spend all my time with him. Like if I could just do anything, you know, if someone said like, if you could give it all up and spend, you know, just to spend it with him, you know, I would, but then I start, you know, missing work. So it's just, it's just like you said, it's just such a balance. 
I could write a book on this with you. I know exactly how you feel. It's like you and it's funny because he doesn't feel the same way. Oh, yeah, I do. No, he he goes back to work and it's like there's no well, guilt. No, you feel like a guilt. I don't feel guilt. But then you're not being true to yourself and your purpose if you don't go work. So yeah. it's like this. Yeah, it's like this pull. Like you want to be with them for. I always moment. feel guilty. Well, I'll tell you. Yeah. yeah, I'll tell you both this. I grew up with a very strong mother who I witnessed all the time working. And I feel like in a way it kind of set the table and the standard for the type of women that I was later attracted to. And it wasn't right. something that kind of, you know, like some, some guys get a little bit off put when they have a woman who's achieving, right. Or it's like, it makes mm. them feel like, Oh, like they got to keep, you know what I mean? Like mm. my whole I've example, been in situations like that. For yeah. Sure. Like mm-hmm. I imagine like in your, someone's trying to date you like, Oh shit, they're going on stage. Yeah. It's, it's hard for a lot of men. But my example was always like watching a woman work a lot. Yeah. And so I think like I, I have that context to maybe not feel guilty. Yeah. Right. Does that make sense? No, I mean, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know if my husband feels guilty. I'm trying to figure out if he's ever said he feels guilty. No, it, does, it doesn't strike me that he feels guilty. You know, he'll, he'll go away, but he, he's more, he's better on like things like FaceTime and, and um, he'll be very present and be calling all the time. Um, whereas I just want to be with him in person. Um, so he can, he can manage it a lot better for whatever reason. Well, I yeah. think also like not to get so deep into gender dynamics, but men are never really pressured to feel strange for working when they have children. Yeah, some... it's wild. People will say to me, I, I talk about this a lot on the podcast, they'll say, do you have a nanny? And I'm like, but no one asks him that, but we work the same amount. Yeah, that's what I'm, that's it's what I'm like saying. So true. It's, it's like, like the, so what, true. People are curious if I have a nanny, why is no one asking him if he has Like we're nanny? doing this together at the same time, so obviously we need some help, but nobody obviously. really asks me ever like, do I yeah. have help? But they'll, And there's of, no guilt in that. Like, you know, it's... I am so grateful for my nanny because um, Arthur loves her so much, and um, and I, I I feel safe um, and fine going to work knowing that he's with somebody that gives him so much love and, and care and attention, um, you know. And I don't have a huge family, so um, it feels like she's part of a family now. And um, and it, you know, we we've just we've got to work. You know, it's like we want to work and we have to work. It's like, it, yeah. So so. Um, it doesn't stop you feeling guilty though when you leave for work. It's oh. such a mind fuck. Yeah. It's such a mind fuck. And I, before going into it, I'm like, I'm still going to work all the time. Like, like I'm so ambitious and I am still, but at the same time, I also want to be able to have the same amount of time with my kids. Yeah. It, let's just think of it as like a biological pull. It's just like, it's just science. It's just science. Just like, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Even though you want to spend time with them, yeah. you know, it's also just like, the bio- biology biology wanting you to be there with them taking care yeah. of them or something i i get it yeah let's discuss your music before you go tell us what is happening in your world your projects all the things so new album coming out soon higher than heaven it's out on the 7th of april it's changed a few times we're trying to do the whole um we're trying to make all the packaging super green so like recycled vinyl tape um cool. cardboard and then the packaging itself, like the, the plastic is, is biodegradable. So, um, and wow. then the tour is also gonna, gonna be very much the same theme, which just takes forever to like organize, um, you know, cause we're trying to, it's venues that, that, that equip us with, with that. And- um, How know, many cities will that be? Sorry? How many cities will that be? However many I can get to by train. Wow. <laughs> so what does that mean? Um, it, it, just, it just means uh, that we try and do like a carbon neutral tour. Yeah, but what does yeah. it mean? How many cities? Is that like a hundred? Oh, like how, I how, see. Um, no, I just I don't know how many. As like, many how, as I can fit in, you know. There's there's always a city that wants me to play, so I just have to do, you know, I have to find a route, and then you know I can't play everywhere, obviously, because because uh, that would take I don't know, all my life. So like we just have to, yeah. But sometimes you know I go back to places, and then sometimes I'm places for the first time. So it's really like a touring route, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. So we can also, I'm sure, find your songs on Spotify too. Yeah. Okay. Everywhere. They're there. Everywhere. Yeah. Okay. So, everywhere. And where can we follow you on Instagram? Where can we? Uh, Instagram is just Ellie Golding. Not very inventive. Um, and then TikTok. I do a lot of TikToks these days. That's fun. Um, and then I just have a new song out with Calvin Harris, our third song called Miracle, which came out the other day. It was doing really well. Um, yeah. You got a lot doing going it on. All. Yeah, you doing got a lot all. going on. Yes. Thank you so much for taking the Thank time. Thank you so much for having me. You're incredible. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Ellie.